Well, when we did the rehearsals this morning, there was no one here. So good to see a uh, very, very full crowd and an absolute pleasure to have you here. Uh, we are very proud at Volkswagen to be part, a very small part of the Renaissance here in Detroit. But from the restaurant, the Shainala Hotel, to the foundation, this place is rocking. And it's very, very, very cool to be here. So Roger, uh, very, very exciting stuff. I don't think it's too late, of course, to wish you all a happy new year. Obviously, good morning. And we are here at Volkswagen to look forward. But of course, before we get there, I'd like to take a moment to look back at our performance in 2018. Because if you think about it, how we get there. Now, in a flat overall market, we sold nearly 355,000 vehicles. That's a 4.2% increase over the previous year. And to me, it's quite simple. We grew because we listened. Our growth has been really powered by our new SUVs. The Tiguan, our number one seller, and of course the Atlas. Strong contenders in the biggest and hottest segments here in the US. And clearly, without a doubt, customers are responding. But I also want to make it clear, it's been driven by the all new Jetta sedan. We know many are saying the car segment is not hot right now, but frankly, there are 4.25 million sedans sold in America last year. That's 800,000 more cars than the entire German car market. So we do believe there is still an opportunity there. And for those of us who care passionately about driving dynamics, they are still extremely, extremely hard to beat. Atlas, Tiguan, Jetta, we now have the most balanced product portfolio we've had in this market. We can spread the sales equally among these core products rather than being reliant on one single vehicle. And the thread through them all, frankly, each one was developed with local engineers, local product planners, specifically for this market. Now, the Atlas SUV and the upcoming Atlas Crossport are produced in our Chattanooga factory. Since we first broke ground there in 2008, we've invested nearly $2.3 billion into Chattanooga and the great state of Tennessee for Atlas and Passat production. But of course, at Volkswagen, it's never enough. We can always do more. We always like to do more. So explain further, please welcome CEO of Volkswagen AG and my boss, Dr. Herbert Dies. Herbert. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. Good morning, everyone. And I still dare to say a happy and successful 2019. Looking back into last year, our group set a new all-time high with 10.8 million deliveries to customers. Here in the United States, Volkswagen Group increased market share slightly. We are actually, we are quite happy with these results given the heavy headwinds from global trade disputes and economic uncertainty. 2019 will be another year of challenges for us in the face of all the worries about global politics and economics. Here in the United States and for the Volkswagen brand, Scott and his team will take Volkswagen into the next phase of our American comeback story. Over the past 10 years, Scott led Audi into a top position in the premium market, and I know he's eager to achieve the same performance for Volkswagen with great new products like the new Passat and the five-seater Atlas Cross Sports, alongside our American-focused product portfolio, electric cars are more and more becoming an opportunity for Volkswagen to become even more relevant in the United States. Electric cars are gaining momentum in many areas of the world. The US has already become the second largest market for electric cars after China. It's our ob objective at Volkswagen to become the most relevant player in this segment by 2025. That is why we are investing $34 billion in electromobility until 2023. Many of you have seen our first US product in our electrification strategy, the Audi e-tron. The Porsche Taycan is next. The MEB platform for the volume segment is the next big step towards zero emission mobility. 
Starting in 2020, Volkswagen will sell electric vehicles based on this new platform as well here in the United States. We will be kicking off with the ID Cross in 2020. With the footprint of a compact SUV and the interior of a Oh, and, and the interior space of a mid-size SUV, and there's more to come. Just take the ID bus, the electric successor to our legendary microbus that will go on sale shortly after. We've always said that we will build electric vehicles like these in North America. We've got a great partnership with the state of Tennessee since 2008, the year we broke ground with our plant in Chattanooga. And it's good to have with us today Governor Bill Haslam of Tennessee, as well as Governor-elect Bill Lee, Chattanooga Mayor Andy Burke, and Hamilton County Mayor Jim Coppinger. Welcome to Detroit, gentlemen. Together, I might say, we have written a great auto story for America with investments of 2.3 billion US dollars in Chattanooga. 3,800 direct jobs have been created at Volkswagen, and more than 12,000 in the auto sector in Tennessee. And on top of this, we established a comprehensive education program for our apprentices. And today I'm very proud to announce that Volkswagen has chosen Chattanooga as home for our second U.S. facility. We will be investing more than 800 million U.S. dollars in our Chattanooga operations and leading-edge e-mobility technology for America. We expect to create another thousand new highly qualified, qualified jobs at our plant, plus many more jobs at suppliers in the great state of Tennessee. Governor Haslam, please join me on stage. I, I really would like to thank you and everybody involved for helping to make this possible. Governor Kessler. Thank you, Dr. Deese, and the thanks is ours. Uh, you know, automobiles are a serious business uh, in Tennessee. We have three OEMs and 1,700 auto suppliers, uh, but uh, as Dr. Deese was saying, 10 years ago when, Chad, when Volkswagen decided to build their very first uh, plant of their own uh, and they chose Chattanooga, it was a big deal for us. And then when they doubled down by adding the Atlas vehicle several years ago, and we've seen a remarkable success, uh, Volkswagen became even more important. So when they started talking about electric vehicle and where it might be produced, we obviously were very hopeful they would choose Tennessee. Uh, I have, uh, by the way, I have about five more days and two hours to be governor. Uh, <coughs> so I don't have very long to say this, but on behalf of 6.6 .6 million Tennesseans, thank you. You've made our state a better place. We're excited about the new vehicle, and we pledge to do the same thing we've done before, provide you with world-class workers. My successor, Bill Lee, who is uh, affectionately known around Tennessee as the Upgrade, uh, I guarantee you will bring the same sort of partnership uh, to Volkswagen as we have as, as, with uh, uh, Mayor Burke and Mayor Coppinger as well. So thank you on behalf of all of us. Uh, I, like I said, I only have five days, so at this point in time, they can't get you in trouble or anything, so I thought it might be worth it just to go ahead and <laughs> show up in my Volkswagen Chattanooga house. And <laughs> thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. We always have been very happy to be in Chattanooga. We feel very much at home there, and thank you for all your support you have given us. Ladies and gentlemen, Volkswagen is 100% committed to the United States, to our customers, partners, and 650 dealers here. Volkswagen is continuing to invest in the U.S. to broaden our manufacturing and our R&D footprint. We want the U.S. economy and the U.S. auto sector to thrive as part of an industry that is globally connected 
and interwoven like no other. Thank you all. And with that, I would like to hand back to Scott Keogh. Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Governor Hassan. Thank you, uh, Dr. Deese. You know, in my interactions with the state of Tennessee, someone who now lives in Virginia just outside of D.C., I know there's a lot of noise and maybe some of it accurate and not accurate about the size of government, the bureaucracy of government, the cumbersomeness of government. When I had a chance uh, in the fall to go down and see uh, Governor Haslam, I was expecting to sit at a conference table about the size of this soccer pitch. I was expecting assistant deputy, deputy assistant to the assistant to the assistant deputy at about a table of 150 people. And uh, frankly, it was the governor uh, and one economic aide, and we held a pragmatic conversation about jobs, about technology, about investments, about what we need to do to make this work. And then one issue crossed over into the future, one phone call, and then uh, government-elect Lee, and I assume he's gonna come in with a giant entourage? No, he walks through the door by himself. And so, just from my humble, limited understandings of government, I can confirm pretty much firsthand uh, the government in Tennessee is uh, pragmatic, straightforward, and right to the point, and uh, very humble. So I couldn't be more proud to interact with you two gentlemen, and of course your uh, economic uh, team as well. It's a well-run ship, so very well done. And uh, as you can probably tell by my New York accent, I am clearly not a native of Tennessee, but having been to the state an awful lot, certainly my family's starting to get uh, a little concerned. But uh, since 2011, clearly we've produced our mid-size Sadat Passat sedan in Chattanooga. We've built over 730,000 vehicles since. They've been sold here and, of course, abroad. Passat is a vital entry point into the brand and has a very strong loyalty. So as other brands exit this segment, we plan to offer them a very, very cool new home. Please welcome the new 2020 Volkswagen Passat. Thank you. Now, you know, I have to leave the script a little bit here because uh, I know this is being dialed into the factory down in Chattanooga, and I know Germans are fanatical about gaps in quality. I just have to say, absolutely phenomenal job. The fit, finish, the exactitude to all of you in Chattanooga. Who says the Americans can't make this stuff happen? Absolutely stunning. So super well done down there in Chattanooga. So as you can see, the Passat is completely restyled. Bold new face, sleek, coupe-like profile, and clearly the dramatic Tornado line running the length of the body. Car looks premium, standard LED headlights and taillights. Inside, the spacious interior gains a new horizontally themed dash, new gauge cluster, and of course, all new infotainment screen. We kept what customers told us they loved, and we improved straightforward what they did not. 
The new Passat has more style, more features, more content, and in Volkswagen style, more value. And it really retains that Volkswagen drivability and comfort. Some of that, of course, in the standard equipment, CarPlay, Android Auto, front assist collision mitigation, blind spot monitoring, and of course, 17-inch alloy wheels. The car will go on sale this summer in the US. We will offer it in five trims. Oh, and one more thing. The Passat, Atlas, and upcoming electric vehicles clearly demonstrate Volkswagen's commitment to deepening further our roots here in America, as does this one final announcement that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Set me free and give me death. There ain't no other choices. When I lay down to go to sleep, I keep on hearing voices. Little whispers in my head, man. Is you fake or loyal? Why no why the death is on the baby pick your push? Yeah, here we come. Hey, here we come. Uh, here we come. Here we come. And when you hear the sound of the drum. Well, I'm certainly earning my pay coming back and forth up here, but uh, I know all of you can grasp the obvious. I guess that video in the soccer pitch pretty much tells you what we're going to do. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, Volkswagen of America is pleased, extremely pleased, to announce a multi-year deal to be the presenting partner of U.S. soccer. That's the women's team, that's the men's national team, as well as youth national teams, and of course, the development academy. Clearly, you can ask why soccer. For one, it's the third most played sport in the United States. Soccer over-indexes for our brand. Its fans are at least 10 years younger than traditional American sports, and they are highly diverse. Young, diverse, active, and loyal. This is exactly where and how we want to position ourselves as a brand. And who better to talk about what exactly this means for the sport than former U.S. national team players, Ali Wagner, Alexi Lalas, and the CEO of U.S. Soccer, Dan Flynn. Yeah, here we come. Uh, here we come. Uh, here we come. Uh, here we come. Well, here we come indeed. It took you guys a little while to get here, but you're, you're here. So, uh, Dan, what are, what are your thoughts on the, uh, on the partnership and on the, on the arrangement? Yeah, we're really excited about our new partnership with Volkswagen. We look forward to working with you on the presenting sponsor uh, part of our Tournament of Nations for the women's national team. Beautiful. You know, Alexa, I hate to ask you the tough question, but it is the... You got for me. It's the dinosaur <laughs> in the room. Now, uh, Dr. Deese, of course, he wants me to make the brand stronger and sell cars, but I told him if we signed this deal, the U.S. men's will at least get back in the world. Oh, you can uh, go in the world. You don't even have to go in. just got to get back in. Oh, oh, yeah. Cut me deep. Cut me deep. All right, yes, the U.S. men's national team did not make the World Cup uh, this summer. But look, as you know, whether it's a team, whether it's a company, you have highs and you have lows. You have ups and your downs. I heard you guys talking about your electrification strategy and stuff like that. Well, the U.S. men's national team has an electrification strategy, all right? And it starts with a brand new coach, and it starts with what I think is a really, really good generation of young talent. So fear not. The U.S. men's national team in 2022 will be back at the World Cup. But if you want a team to support when it comes to your U.S. Uh, national team, yeah. It's the women. It's the women. The defending World Cup champion women, and we can't. We are so excited this summer back defending the World Cup title. You know, he's, he's a savvy press guy. You know, he tells a story, then he pivots right to the women. <laughs> Smart man. Uh, yeah. yeah. Since you guys won a few titles, and obviously we got some big matches coming up in yeah. June. I think the team is in Portugal. But yeah. what are your thoughts on our team? I think uh, they look fantastic. To be fair, um, I don't think I've seen the team play better than they did last season. Um, they've got some really good young players coming up through the ranks. So cool. I think when you look at the talent and the depth of this squad, they are poised to make a really good run in the World Cup. Now, the coach won't want to hear that because that means lofty expectations, but that's what we have for this group. 
of young players. And I think the reality is it's their, it's their tournament to win. Yeah. And they've got momentum on their side, but momentum only takes you so far. And I think there's no one better to speak to that than Jill Ellis. She was the one who led them in the 2015 to the title, and she's the one that's going to be tasked with doing that again. So let's hear a little bit from her. Hi, everyone. Sorry I couldn't be with you today. I'm at training camp in Portugal in early preparations for the World Cup this summer. First of all, we're delighted to have Volkswagen as a presenting partner and supporter of U.S. soccer. And as head coach of the U.S. women's national team, I'm pleased to announce that Volkswagen will be helping us address grassroots initiatives that will make a positive impact within the soccer community. Initially, these will be directed to coaching and especially working to increase the opportunities for female coaches across America. I'm looking forward to seeing the results of this groundbreaking partnership, and we all look forward to your support this summer as we work towards winning the World Cup in France. Go USA. That's great news, Jill. Thank you very much for joining us on stage. Thank you, thank you very much. And I want to clearly thank our guests. And look, our program is about helping to grow this magnificent sport here in the United States. We're calling it, as you can see there, one goal, and it's the first step in making it easier for women to stay with the sport and pass on their wisdom, passion, and frankly, love to the next generation of players. We want to help more women into coaching. I'm really excited about what we collectively can accomplish with U.S. soccer. Soccer, frankly, is the people's sport, and as you all know, Volkswagen is the people's car. And we also think the Atlas, Passat, and Tiguan are perfect vehicles for soccer families across America. With that, I would like to ask Dr. Deese, the governor and governor-elect, to please join me on stage for a photo. Thank you very, very much.